Now we go over to our mics to bring you the man Keith Stone Grills. Thank you so very much. It's not every day you have a celebrity in studio and a sporting one at that. Let me say very good afternoon to my very special guest here today. He has uh, very deep and brilliant roots and he plays in the American professional, uh, American football pro, pro league in the United States. I'm very honored and privileged to welcome Mr. Vincent Ray. Mr. Ray, very good afternoon to you. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you, Mr. Sound. Okay, right. So you've got it there from the man himself. He's um, just by way of background. Uh, you heard his name, Vincent Ray. Uh, has uncle in roots. His grandfather, Lemuel Ray, is from Anguilla. His uh, grandmother, also from Anguilla. And his great grandmother, also from Anguilla. He was born in New York and he started playing American pro uh, football at the age of seven. He's now a member with the Cincinnati Bengals American Professional Football League in the United States. So let me just start by asking Vincent to just tell us a bit more about yourself. I've given them a little tease of, of your, your background, but um, tell us a bit more about who uh, is Vincent Ray. Well, um, I was born in Queens, New York, to be specific, and um, uh, lived my, both of my parents are married and, and everything. I have a younger brother and an older sister. And I'm, like you said, I've been playing football since the age of seven. And I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to receive a college scholarship to play football in the state of North Carolina at a school, um, Duke University. And after four years, I, I had a very productive year, I'd say. Very pr productive four years. Yes. And graduated school and now I, I just finished my first year in the NFL and um, I'm, I'm very thankful to my parents and mostly I'm thankful f to God for putting me in the position that I'm in. Yeah. What led you into into um, football uh, with the sort of size that you have you know you look more like a, a good heavyweight boxer why have why did you choose for example boxing or or, or you know basketball or even wrestling, one of those sports. But you've decided to go the route of, um, of football, American football. Well, at, when I was seven years old, I remember walking to the store with my father, and he he was looking and he said, "Hey, they're playing football over there. Do you want to join?" And I said, "Yes." And ever since then, every day of my life, every year of my life, I've been playing football. I've also played baseball and basketball for many years, but football is what I stuck to. Yeah, well, why did you decide to stick to, to football? What about it that really enticed you, made you want to play it? Well, to be honest, I like baseball more, but my father told me I was better at football, so he, he told me I should stick with it, and I figured I, always, I should always listen to my father. I mean, my parents always know what's best. And I stuck with it, and the part of the game that I like the most is that you can be as violent as you want to be on that field, and everything stays between what we call everything stays between the lines. And off the field, I'm, I like to say I'm a nice person, I'm a, I'm, I'm a good guy overall, <laughs> but on the field, you get to be someone totally yeah. different. So tell us about on the field, you know, what makes it different from it, when you're inside the lines as opposed to when you're outside? Well, on the field, I was always taught once you put on that helmet, you become someone different. And when I'm in between those lines, it's kind of like a, a battle. And it's a simple game. Uh, the other side is trying to get the ball in. Get, get the ball in the end zone. They're trying to score, and I'm just trying to stop them. I play on defense, so I'm on the defensive side. I'm just trying to stop those guys, and and it's it's fun because you get to you get to be violent and you get to play very hard. And and at the end of the day, there's a lot of sportsmanship between both teams. Now, tell us a bit about your time, your your school, um, your high school, and um, going off to college and eventually ending up at. Uh, with on a football scholarship to Duke University. Okay, well, I went to high school at um, a school called Bayside High School in Queens. Um, 
I actually had to travel, um, take two trains and a bus, public transportation, to get to school back and forth. And it took almost two hours each way. We were pretty far away. But um, I, I had a very good senior year, and I was offered a scholarship uh, to Duke University. Yeah. How were you spotted? Who, who spotted you? Uh, well, pretty long story. That, to make a long story short, there was a coach in New York City who knew a coach down in North at Duke University, mm -hmm. and he he said yeah, we have a pretty pretty good player here. You may want to take a look at him because in New York football is not as big as per se North Carolina or Texas or Florida maybe. So the coach came up and he saw a couple plays of me and he said that he wanted me to play at Duke University. I was more than glad to say yes. <laughs> and you were selected and then you went to Duke University. What was it like and what did you major in at uh, Duke University? At Duke University, I majored in sociology and minored in theater studies. Okay. Um, so I've, I've done some acting in college. Mm -hmm. and um, Duke was a great experience. I had a chance to meet people from all over the world, um, not only all over the United States, but everywhere. And it was great to meet so, so many people and just to build relationships with people. And um, it, it was a, a tough school where you had to really buckle down and I had to take care of my athletics, which I had to take care of football and academics as well, which was tough. It was a tough four years, but it definitely made me, was part of what made me into the man I am. Who were some of the... American pro football had produced many outstanding black players. Uh, who are some of the folks who may have influenced you uh, in your football career? Well, I looked up to many guys uh, who played my position as well as other positions that were just very dominant. Um, guys such as Ray Lewis, who was a, uh, one of the top linebackers in the NFL. I'd say the top. Um, and when I this past year when I had gone to Cincinnati to play for the Bengals I actually my roommate was actually a starting linebacker who was a veteran played for 11 years and it, I had a great time staying with him and just learning how to how to to play the game more efficiently and more importantly to take care of your body because as you get older as you Right now, I'm, I, I just turned 23, but as you get older and get to your yeah. 30s, Wait then you, the body. Yes, sir, your body just starts to break down, so you have to build, make sure you get in massages and things like that. Which leads me to the obvious next question. How do you condition and prepare yourself? How do you stay fit? Uh, American football being the sport that is, which calls for a tremendous amount of fitness and kind of conditioning, crop conditioning. How do you do that? Well, number one, you have to make sure your body is strong enough to go through a full season, which is about four to five months. To go through a full season in the NFL, your body has to be strong enough to hold up for all that time. So in the off season, you want to make sure you're lifting pretty hard, lifting very hard, and and that is lifting weights. Yes, weight lifting. Okay. Weight, doing a lot of weightlifting and um, squats for your legs and just a lot of lifting as well as running. What about diet and nutrition? Oh, diet and nutrition is, is very important also. It's important because you want to make sure you're eating enough protein and enough, you, want, you want to take enough calories in because when you work out, you're actually burning calories. And what most people don't understand is that the time you get stronger is not in the weight room, but when you're eating. is Because when, when you're in the weight room, you're breaking your muscles down. But when you're eating enough protein and proper foods and vegetables, and you're sleeping as well, that's when you build your muscles up. Tell us a bit about your association now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I've been there since... May I've been with the Cincinnati Bengals and it's been a I've had a great time there um, this year we didn't have that that great of a year but we feel like we ended it on a positive note 
uh, we we feel like we're, we're learning how to win better. And I'm honestly, I'm glad just to be in the locker room with those guys and with the coaches and and just get better with those guys. How do you feel amongst your teammates? Um, a new player just coming off your rookie year with seasoned professionals. What, what's the feeling like? I definitely feel at home with those players. They've taught me a lot about being a professional. Uh, knowing that uh, as a rookie, I'm coming from college and I'm used to used to just just being a, a very good player, be, being one of the top players, and then coming to the to a professional team where you're just kind of like a small fish in a big pond. And the other players have have showed me how to separate myself between other guys uh, like you have veterans on the team that have showed me, uh, that have showed me how to last in the NFL and and how to improve myself how have you been able to adjust from the college university playing football there going into the big league the pro league um, it's it's been transition a, I'm looking at the trans how have you been able to transition well at my and at Duke University in college football it was tough because not it was football and schooling as well, which was the way I see it, kind of like two full-time jobs. Um, so that was tough, but I'd say that the NFL is, in terms of um, managing my time, it's, a, it's also a challenge, um, even though college has helped me to manage my time. But the, in the NFL, um, some days you have 10-hour days at least, and then you then you're gonna to want to stay extra if you want to be better. So some days I was there for 12 hours um, at work, just working on my body and learning plays and things like that. Obviously, you're very keen on learning about your roots. Born in New York, um, Van William Roots, some of the family members here, Rodney Ray, Dale Rogers, Felix Fleming. What's it like for you coming back from the States, coming back and really identifying and getting to know more about your roots. This has been a great experience. So, number one, the weather every day has been great. So, uh, um, the skies have been clear. I mean, this is it's just a great atmosphere here. And being my first time here, I've been able to, to meet with a lot of my family, um, with I mean, a lot of rays and I, it's weird, I, I'll be, I'll, I'm sitting at a restaurant and then um, a guy would just come up to me and say, hey, I'm your cousin. And I didn't, we didn't even know each other, but through my grandfather, um, Lemuel Ray, a lot of, he's brothers and sisters with a lot of their grandparents. So um, it, it's been great coming back here and meeting a lot of cousins. And it's quite obvious that you're very much into family. Yes, definitely. Okay. The advice, Vincent, um, you would have for young people in the community, uh, some of them caught up with um, delinquent behavior, drugs, and, and so on, gangs, and so on. What sort of message would you have for the young people of Anguilla? Well, first of all, I, I was raised with, um, um, I grew up, I went to school with some, some guys who, who kind of strayed from the path, who, who've also played football with me, and, and things didn't work out for them. And, one thing I would say, first of all, is to always listen to your parents, even though it may sound cliche. That would be my first advice because your parents are the ones that love you the most and want the best for you. So I, w I would always say listen to your parents and try to do what they say. And, and you don't really want to get caught up with a lot of delinquent behavior because those things will follow you even as you get older because they'll be put on your record. Yeah. Also, I want to hear your take on, and you're an example of this, a perfect example of this, a marriage between getting a good education and sport, and realizing that after sport, and you have an education, there's life after sport. You've been able to do that pretty well, having gone to Duke University and uh, get your degree, and now you're into the American Professional Football League. Yes, well, all, all my life, my dream has been to play um, professional football in the NFL, but my goal 
has been otherwise. My goal has been to, I want to be a teacher when, when football is done. And I know that with athletics, any type of sports, with the turn, with a wrong turn of your leg or anything, you, you can be finished forever. So I know that it, number one has always been education. And that's part of the reason I chose the college that I chose to go to. And that's not only mine, I can't, that's not only my ideas, but the ideas of my parents. And that's where I get those ideas from. Any thought of coming back? Well, professional American football is not played here in Anguilla. We have basketball, cricket, football, and the other sports at track and field. But any thought? Have you given it any thought about possibly maybe coming back in the summer and running some camps? Um, get to know football, America, um, football camp for, for youngsters in the school. Any thought about doing something like this here? Oh, since I've been here, I, I've definitely thought about it in the last several days because I didn't know f American football was was watched as much in Anguilla. And now that I've seen that it's pretty popular here, but they don't really play it here, I would I would definitely like to come back at some point to do a clinic. Um, I don't know about the summer because I'll be busy with football and things like that. But I would that's something that I definitely want to do is come back, have a clinic, and show the kids how to play some football. The fact that you've been here, I'm sure now you'll have the entire Anguilla community rooting for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, I, I hope so. I hope yeah, that you, you, we'll, we'll have one of our own, and we'll be able to see you on the television networks. Yeah, I hope when when they see the the R E Y on the back of my jersey, they, they'll root for me. Yes, they can identify with with Vincent Ray. Vincent, it's certainly been a pleasure having you here. Thanks for coming in and sharing with us, and uh, may you be an example. May our youngsters um, see something in you that they can emulate and, and go forward. And I really like the. The comments that you made in particular for youngsters um, who some of them have gotten themselves um, involved with delinquent behavior, gangs, and, and drugs, and the like, and also the marriage um, for good education and, and sport. I really like the, the linkages there. Thank you very much. And um, number one, I, I, I credit my parents who, uh, who, who always told me about the importance of the marriage between education sports and education is always one and that will lead to sports that's what they always well, they've always told me and thank you very much Vincent Ray American pro football player with the Cincinnati Bengals and who has deep and brilliant roots he's related to Rodney Ray Dale Rogers Felix Fleming and, and lots of other people thank you again for coming in and sharing with us and good luck in your professional football career thank you very much listening to Radio Angola 95.5 FM who are listening